If you're anything like me, you probably had this nagging itch in the back of your mind. I want to make a game. I need to make a game. But there's just one problem. I have next to zero experience in game development. And I've heard it's, well, it's pretty hard. But is it really that hard? Well, let's find out. Okay, let's start with what I do know. I'm decent with Blender and 3D art, so that's a good start. I've dabbled in software development through some online courses. I've watched countless video essays and tutorials on game development over the years. Out of curiosity and interest, I've used Unreal Engine for presentational purposes in my profession. I watched Bracky's Godot tutorial. Oh, and I have a bachelor's in architectural engineering. So yeah, you could say I'm basically an expert in game development, which obviously means I should jump straight into making an MMORPG or a massive open world adventure game. But maybe, just maybe, to make it easier for you to follow along, I should start smaller. How about making a simple stylized first person shooter game? But what makes an FPS game actually a game? Well, a player, a gun, enemies, a user interface, levels, objectives, satisfying feedback, which for me is essential. Let's see if I can pull this off. I will be using Godot for this tutorial because I like it. And if you also like it and like this style of videos, you should like and subscribe. I have big plans coming. I started with what I know best, Blender blocked out a bare bones test level and began work on a player controller. I found a tutorial on source-like movement in Godot and jumped right in. Welcome to my Godot FPS tutorial. Until I realized I had no clue what half the math meant. I was following along and it was working, kind of. Problem is, I wasn't digesting the code. It was too deep for a first episode, for you guys of course. 48 hours and several existential crises later, I ditched it for something simpler. Enter Lucky's video and things worked out great. I applied his techniques and made a huge amount of edits, additions and modifications and it's fair to say I understand this code. And this made me put some new ground rules for the making of this game. Rule number one is I'm not allowed to copy any tutorial or code unless I really understand it and can easily modify it. And rule number two is I shouldn't be afraid to ditch a lot of work if I believe that in the end it's going to give me a better result. With that out of the way, I started evolving my controller. You know, basic functions like you might expect. For example, when we tried to go upstairs, it would just work, right? Nope. And this is a very famous problem in video games, the stairs problem. Because to a dumb computer, what is the difference between a wall that is this high or a wall that is this small, in this case stairs? Yes, you need to do everything. You have to remember, computers are really dumb and you need to feed them all of the very detailed instructions or they will not work as you expect. One way to handle this is by detecting the height of the wall the player hit through raycas, then checking if it's below a defined step height. If it is, the player can step over it. Needless to say, I solved it in the dumbest, laziest, most unoptimized way possible. Meanwhile, I gave the test level a tiny glow up, the shiny new controller feeling good. We've got walking, jumping, crouching, sliding, and best of all, going upstairs. We'll probably add more stuff in the future. Player system is done, but movement alone is just cardio. And who likes cardio? So I whipped up a quick gun model in Blender and added it to my character. 48 hours later and a couple of tutorials, we have a working gun. But then I remembered a vital piece of FPS game development logic. There are two types of bullets in video games, a hitscan bullet and projectile bullets. Let me explain what I know. Here is your player controller, where we have a camera and our gun. Let's add a target to our scene to visualize this. This is what happens when you shoot a bullet in both methods. A hitscan bullet's trajectory looks something like this. We draw a straight line from our camera, a raycast if you will, and then we scan where it hits. And if it's an enemy, we do damage. This is very simple and instant. This exists in Counter-Strike, Valorant, and Call of Duty for some guns. A projectile bullet, on the other hand, is more like a real-life bullet, meaning it originates from the actual gun. But this means it doesn't automatically correct itself to the center of the screen. This means we also need a raycast to know where we are aiming to correct the bullet's trajectory to work as expected. This realization made me feel proud that I know this stuff already. And I did use projectile bullets even though I don't know how to properly implement or code it yet. But I can't be bothered to fix it now, future me will take care of it. Gun system is done. Now that was a lot of work, let's check our progress. Wait, that's it? It's been two weeks and I'm using the word done loosely here. Suddenly I remember that my gun is useless if I have nothing to shoot at. We need something to shoot. I grabbed a chunky creature from Sketchfab. 
made my own rig and animations for it, gave it a makeover, named it Polky, and dropped it in game. Importing easy, making it do things not so easy, is what I would say if I was you. One week, three failed AI attempts, and a lot of life decisions reflections later, it now follows and attacks you. Yeah, that's it. And it barely works. But we have an enemy. Now we implement a health and damage system because shooting things that don't die is not fun. Also, getting hit without dying is pointless. We need a challenge. No pain, no gain. After a struggle and a couple of days of work, I have an enemy that can die and even made a particle system for the death. But I really like ragdolls, and that was so much easier said than done. So many hours of agony later i finally got it to work by redoing everything about the rigging and animation of bulky also the enemies are still stupid i mean yeah they can follow me but as soon as i jump on a ledge they get confused and start glitching out and man this made me realize how poor godot's tutorial and documentation is because i spent hours trying to find the best solution for it i mean i am a passionate hater of unity but it has a way better community support but i am optimistic that godot will get its dominance sooner rather than later anyway i got it working eventually enemy is done quick side note the whole time i've been shooting my aim felt kind of cursed expectedly so i added the crosshair to the center of my screen and yeah my controller was way off this means i can no longer ignore the projectile bullet problem from before remember when i said future me will fix it well future me is now and i've been busy fixing the aiming, added proper hit detection through ray casts, added hit markers, suddenly shooting feels right. Then while I was in gun mode, I figured might as well throw a reload system, gave the gun actual ammo, made a little ammo counter and it works, you just can't see it yet. Gun system is done for real this time. Now you might have noticed, there's been absolutely zero sound in this game so far, no footsteps, no gunshots, just me sitting in silence, pretending it's normal. So I finally caved, I wasn't about to start making my own sounds just yet. I went searching through the internet, found some free sound packs and started slapping them into the game. Shout out to Kenny's and also the gun sound from Red Dead Redemption 2. Now we have footsteps, gunshots, a reload sound and we'll later add ambient sounds. Sound design is, I mean it's not done but it's there. At this point the game technically works, but it still felt like a pile of duct taped system with no meaning, just like real life. I gave it a quick UI pass. I added a pause menu, a very basic HUD, nothing fancy, just enough to fool myself into thinking it's a real game. UI system is done. I like the way I gaslight myself when saying all of these systems are done, even though they are like only 5% done. And with that I kinda had something, a loop. You spawn in, you move, you shoot, things die, sometimes you die. No real purpose yet, just like real life. But it's playable, sort of, barely, hey, it runs. I basically built a sandbox consisting of stairs and violence. And honestly, that's kind of beautiful, but not beautiful enough. So I added an actual level that I made in Blender and scattered around some trees, some rocks, and that made quite the difference. But let's be real, right now, shooting enemies is fun for like 30 seconds. Then you get kind of bored. So we will have to work on that. But I've spent about two months already on this video and this game. So again, future me will handle it. Let's do a final progress check. Player is done, definitely needs a lot of improvements. My gun is done, I definitely need to add more guns. My enemy is done, also need to add more enemies and make them smarter. We have UI, but it's very basic. We don't even have a main menu yet. We have one level and we have very basic feedback through particle systems and hit markers. After all that, I did some off-screen mining, meaning some polishing touches vegetation rocks and more details and lighting upgrades bringing us here games finally got bones janky bones but they're holding together in the next video i'll be working on the fun you know, more weapons, more enemies, more challenge, purpose for adventuring the maps, more maps, all that good stuff. Until then, if you've made it this far, thanks. I know this isn't a tutorial or a polished devlog from an expert or anything fancy, it's just me figuring it out as I go. And it's been a lot of fun. And to answer the question, yes, game development is hard, very hard. I spent months on making a game that has content for about one minute before becoming boring. And there's so much more stuff to do. I'm sure without my design background and coding knowledge, it would take me much more time and it would look a lot worse. But for me, fun defeats hard any day of the week. And game development is so much fun for a lot of people. Frustrating a lot, but fun. If you enjoyed this chaos, consider subscribing and see what the future holds for this project. But just know, 
If you don't, Polky is gonna remember. He always remembers. See you in the next one.